There we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be out there where you are. Um, greetings, my excellent friends. Greetings, my excellent friends. It's so good to see you. My name is Jeff Fritz. And uh, today, today is, what day is today? I don't even know what day today is. My goodness, I'm so running around. I'm so excited. Today is February 28th, 2020. And we're going to write a little bit of code today, and, and and we've got a guest joining us today. I'll bring him on in just a little bit. I want to say hello to the chat room first. This is a sponsored stream from our friends at Madrinas, but I want to make sure that, that we say hello and we, we keep true to a, a bit of what we do here on stream, writing some code together, building cool applications. Um, but we're going to have a lot of fun talking about coffee throughout the stream today. Let me say hello. Uh, just running down the list here, I see... Uh, .NET Kyle is here. D.D. Walsh. Good morning. Yes, it is. It's Friday. Oh, yeah. Hugo Doll. Thank you so much for tuning in. Fire Soul 453. Welcome in. Nice to meet you. Jeff Whitmer. Good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, John Valjean is here. Hello, hello. Uh, Lithics, good day to you. Stelzy, hey there. Perry at Digital Ox. Good morning. Cymorp. Hello, how's it going? We're um we're gonna go a little bit different today. We're gonna work on we're gonna um step away from a little bit of the blazer work that we've been doing the past few weeks here, and and I want to I want to get into a little bit of an app that I've been tinkering with. It's something that I've wanted to do for some time, and and in talking with our friends at Madrinas Madrinas Coffee, um they sponsor the stream. 
There's links down below. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, but this is something I've wanted to do where I've wanted to know a little bit about sentiment around a topic on Twitter. This is something that... that it feels like it's it's something we should be able to do and, and I would love to be able to have a dashboard to work on this and and when I talk to talk to our friends Kayla and Alex at Madrinas Coffee about hey what can we do on stream I, I brought up this idea you know what hey th this is a project I've been wanting to work on maybe we can work on that together maybe there's some insights some things that we can look at around there that make sense that we can talk about together and do on stream and they thought it was a great idea. And in fact, the founder of Madrina's Coffee, Alex, is going to be joining us in just a minute here. I'm going to drop into Discord here and uh, see if we can get connected there. Shlomo from Madrina's is here. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Um, they'll be helping out with some of the some of the giveaways, some of the things that we're going to do today. There is um, there is a Gleam giveaway from from Madrinas, if you click just below the stream here on Twitch, uh, there is there's a logo there. You can click through there and um, register, and you can um, you just have to give your name and email, and you can win one of five Madrinas fuel cups. Very cool stuff. There we go. I think there's a, I'm in the right room now for uh, for Discord. I don't think I have my Discord overlay set right though. Let me change. You know what's up, my man? Hey, how's it going? There's Alex. Thank good you morning, so good morning. much. So, um, my gosh, it, I, I was just telling the folks here, the, the project that we were talking about doing on stream, it's something that that feels simple and and provides so much value to get a little bit of insight on a term, a, a, an account on on Twitter. And I feel like Madrinas has has a real positive vibe out there around the product that we can kind of highlight and and show. A little bit of code, learn a little bit about machine learning to talk about. Yeah, that's sentiment analysis. Yeah. So using using all of that soft data that's out there and trying to figure out a way to to interpret it as quickly as we po uh, possibly can. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a question here from .NET Kyle asking, well, hang on. Before I get into the questions over there, do you want to introduce yourself to the folks of that course, are... Of course, man. Yo, dude, thank you for, for taking some time today, obviously, to do this and to hang out. And everybody that's over in... Uh, uh, Jeff's chat, guys, thank you so much for, for letting me come and hang for a minute with y'all. And Shlomo, who's hanging in the chat. I'm Alex. I'm one of the founders of Madrina's Coffee. Very proud uh, coffee partner now for, for C Sharp Fritz and everything that happens here on this amazing channel. So, uh, uh, yeah, we wanted to come and give you guys a chance to uh, uh, hang with us as well as we wanted to just come hang with y'all for uh, a little bit. Um, also give you guys a chance to win some free coffee, which uh, we have a giveaway link for. Yeah. Um, as well as guys, you know, you have an opportunity over the next little bit already uh, to get 40% off a Madrina's coffee order using code. Uh, is it just your full name? Do we, is that how we have it set up? C sharp Fritz? It's, it's set up for it's just Fritz. F R I T Z. Perfect. That's, Easier. Five letters. Oh or my six. gosh. Yes. I'm bad at counting, but uh, <laughs> probably five. So yeah. just code Fritz gets you 40% off. You have a, a, a little bit of time here to get. 40% off your entire Madrina's coffee order. If you've tried Madrina's before and you know you like it, 40% uh, is a great way to load up. And if you've never had it before and you want to support uh, Fritz, uh, by all means, 40% is a, obviously is a huge discount for, for, some, for some sampling, for some trial. If you want to just figure out what we got going on, if it's right for you. We have cold brews and we have K-Cups. And I'm always mixing and matching both in my day. Love the K-Cups. Um, I'm My gosh. Uh, a few years ago, I got my first uh, Keurig machine, and and it changed the way that I drank coffee because I went from I went from a drip machine that was, gosh, I'm I'm going to take out the filters and I'm going to do the grind and all that oh, yeah. stuff, and and to get into a, a K cup where it's I'm not even thinking, and ten seconds later I've got coffee. It's so much less of a hassle, man. And mm -hmm. that's it's 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 you know everything that we've that we've done with this company is try to set up. Um, like the premium, super premium specialty coffee experience, but as convenient as possible. Uh, large in part just because me and my brother are uh, lazy. We don't want to do the whole thing where we make it all. You know what I mean? Like, sure. Like, like the can of cold brew. It's just ready to go. Just grab it and and, and roll. And then obviously K cups are just the, probably the easiest way to have hot coffee. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I've if folks here on stream. They've seen me. I've been drinking the vanilla cappuccino here for the last few weeks. I loaded up on a, on a case or two of it, and my gosh, I, I I started drinking cappuccino in college, and it was one of those yeah. things. I'm I'm not gonna drink cappuccino at home. I don't have the <laughs> machine for it. All the prep and this, that, and the other. And and I don't want to go to a fancy coffee shop for it, but to have it in a can, ready to grab. My gosh, I've got a the the rest of the case is sitting here under the desk on the other side of the office here. Fantastic. Yeah, man, it's it's that like like I said, that's just it's all about convenience for us trying to get it ready to go. And uh, and yeah, man, I'm so glad that we're working with you now, and and we oh, get gosh. a chance to caffeinate you and and what you do here with with uh, with your content. And uh, yeah. and did you got a lot of different touch points, man? You got yourself. Uh, <laughs> You got yourself that blog, which is dope. You got yeah, your book, thank which, you. is, which is which is dope. So, man, we're really happy to be working with you. The the next book is coming out here in the in the next few weeks. I'm really looking forward to that. Some of the topics that we've been coding here on stream, we're we're going to be showing off in that book. I've got some speaking gigs coming up over the next few months where we're going to actually be highlighting and showing some of the things that I've been doing on stream live in person in Orlando, oh, in yeah. Seattle. We're going to be in Amsterdam showing that off. Really, really great uh, series of events. I'll be in Knoxville talking about it. Knoxville, Tennessee is a local, eh, not local, but regional event for me that I like to get out to. Um, Knoxville is a great city, too. That's a good town to be in. I like how it's, it's got a real mountain vibe to it. I, I Okay, don't don't tell anybody this, but I love going there just for the food. I, I I was gonna bring that up. They, <laughs> you can eat eat and drink really well in Knoxville, so you'll have a good time. <laughs> oh, the barbecue is amazing there. Yeah. Um, it, there was a question from um, one of our friends in here. I believe it was .NET Kyle asked in the chat room: Is Madrinas a West Coast thing? Actually, it's not. We're like an internet thing is the best way to yeah. think about it. <laughs> we're from we're from the Midwest. Uh, I'm born and raised St. Louis, uh, Missouri, and this is where this is where we've set up our company. Um, but I mean, we're really more of an internet thing. You can find us on our web store, uh, and just get, uh, you can get our coffee direct. Also, you can get us on Amazon. Uh, so we try to be as available for anybody anywhere, you know, and not try to, st uh, stick to any sort of geographical region. Very cool. And, oh my gosh, thank you for the subscription there, Welsh Ronaldo. Uh, I, I make donations for all of our subscriptions, all of our cheers. This quarter, we're donating to code.org. Yeah, in the Lou. There you go. Twan McFry. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, stuff being accessible on, on Amazon. It, it's, it, it's funny how, it, it, gosh, even my wife's grandparents are now all over Amazon gift cards. Oh, my gosh. Amazon yeah. gift cards. You know, being able to. Amazon's like taking over the world, man. And like it's got this. It's it's kind of like a double edged sword because uh, obviously it they they do a really good job of like building their community like they're all their prime users and everything and building their business so it's fun for us to work with them directly which we've been working with them directly they uh, they've been a blast to, and and really cooperative but like double edged sword man is like they're just conditioning conditioning everybody that like oh yeah same day shipping one day shipping yeah. this is this is par this is how you need to do it <laughs> and so I mean when we ship from our web store it's impossible to get to any get our coffee to anybody the same day the way they do they do with prime now you know if they've, you're in a big market they've got their own shipping company now oh they, yeah and they got they're now leasing all these planes mm, yes how, how leased, like i think they leased uh like 47 planes from boeing oh I my think gosh that was the, the the story that i saw yeah i mean like they're they're becoming a logistics company and uh who was it? Was it FedEx that just had that really bad breakup with them? Like FedEx is no longer doing business with Amazon was, because yeah. they didn't want to be so reliant on them. It, it was like last summer, uh, Amazon, yeah, they cut FedEx out. They didn't get a good rate or something. Yeah, I mean, and also, dude, it, the, the the logistics companies, their their reliance on Amazon is insane. Like I I think I've read somewhere that USPS, like thirty percent of all parcels on it in a given twelve month period, uh, are Amazon. And how many how many U.S. Postal Service trucks do you see now on Sundays? They're not delivering yeah. mail; they're delivering for Amazon. Yeah, it's Crazy. nuts, man. So we, it like I said, it's double edged sword because it's really good because there's so many people out there that prefer to shop on Amazon. So there, if there are people out there that you know you wanted to try Madrinas or whatever, and and you just you just only buy stuff on Prime, like we're there available. <clears throat> but we also have the the web store, so we're kind of like also competing with the expectations which is good it put, makes puts pressure on everybody to stay creative and make sure you're you're doing what you need to do to like 
bring a good quality product to market at a good cost and that you can still realistically get to people on time. So I don't know. It's all good business. It's just, sure. it's, it's, it's crazy. Oh, it absolutely is. Well, let, let's get into the, the project here a little bit today. I'll, I want to show you a little bit of how we're going to analyze some of the data, some of the tweets out there about Madrinas. And I want to get some of your feedback as we're going through this and we're looking at how we can position and show some of the things on, on a dashboard about how we analyze and, and pull in data from from Twitter and, and we can learn yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit more about that. Um, if you don't mind, uh, I'm going to play some music in the background here. It'll come through a little bit quiet on the on the channel back to you. I like to play, this is called no Music worries. to Code By. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's intended to be um, a kind of groovy instrumental music that gets you in the flow, gets you focused so that whatever task you're working on, you, all those other things that you're thinking about just kind of fade away. Um, yeah. So it's really cool. It's groovy music that we like to listen Flow's to. Flow is a good word for it too. I think that's like, I think that's like a isn't that like the psychological term for it for that for that mode you get in where that you're state just of jamming? flow. Yeah, yeah. So this is called cyan. This is one of our favorites we listen to here on channel. There we go. Let me know if it's too loud for you coming down. There we go. All right, friends. So this was written by our friend Carl Franklin. And uh, folks, you can execute the music command to learn more about music to code by here on stream. All right, so let me head over to, to the desktop here and let me show you one of the first things that you need to do when you set up and you wanna integrate with Twitter is you need, to set up, you need to set up applications with them. You need to sign in, you need to get an account over on Twitter's uh, service so that they know you're a developer, you're building an application, you're gonna integrate with them. This is an, an application that I registered with them previously that I'm not currently using. We're just gonna repurpose for this. When we're ready to deploy the real application, we'll set up and register an appropriate application for this. But I just use this one and bounce it around for when I'm developing and testing things so that I don't, I don't go over the limit of queries on Twitter before I actually uh, need the application for something real, you know? So this is, oh, yeah. uh, it, this is called friends list. And um, I originally was using this to get build lists of what other friends are looking at on Twitter. Hey, who are all those folks you're following? But that's not what I'm gonna use this for today. I'm just using this because I have some, I have some keys and tokens already set up for this. And these are really long strings that are just, right, they're, they're gobbledygook. It's a bunch of text that doesn't really mean anything to us as humans, but... Gobbledygook. Yeah, that's a technical term. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's a bunch of goo that's out there that... It, it's it's effectively a password to the Twitter service. Right. So, um, I've already got this configured. I've copied the keys and tokens out of the screen here so that I don't accidentally show them here on stream. I've done that once or twice, Alex. And when you show passwords on screen... It's like, quick, go reset your password off screen. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah, folks yeah. are breaking oh, yeah. in. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been there, done that, man. Oh, so, <laughs> um, yeah, don't want to be doing that. So I'm using Visual Studio 2019. Um, the folks can download Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition. Free, easy for anybody to get. VisualStudio.com. And we're going to build... Um, a console application here that's going to just get the data for us and save it into a CSV, that comma delimited format you use in Excel. That way we can read it into our report application later called Power BI. So for the purposes of this, um, I'm going to call this project uh, madrinas.sentiment and we'll create that and it's going to generate just a simple console application, right? A command line. I don't really need a user interface for this part. I just wanted to go get some data, save it, and then we'll read it in the report system later. This so we get to see what everyone really thinks about us. Exactly. Well, <laughs> not just what folks really like, but there's also, maybe there's trends that we can figure out, right? Maybe, maybe there's something where, you know what? Gosh, there was a shipping hiccup that happened, you know, in a certain part of the part of the world and folks, we're like, oh, I thought it was going to get my, my stuff on this day, and it didn't arrive until a day later, so they were sad or something. Maybe there's stuff like that we can figure out, because yeah, people, man. people also share their location on Twitter. So, so, so theoretically, you can regionalize sentiment. Exactly. 
right? Oh, here's where people are talking about here where people are talking about Madrinus, and we can zoom in a little bit and see what's going on there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to add into the project here. I'm going to add a library. Um, where to go? Uh, where's it? manage NuGet? Just NuGet. This is the 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 name. It's not a chocolate thing, but this is the name of the um, right the packaging system that we use for .NET projects. This is all .NET that we're using. Right. Um, .NET is a framework that we can use on Windows, Mac, Linux. You can even build mobile apps for uh, uh, iOS and Android with this. So I'm going to add this library, link to Twitter, that allows me to search Twitter easily, which kind of sounds weird when you think about it, but trust what, me. What, searching this. Twitter? Yeah. But programmatically being able to search directly across Twitter instead of having that text box. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, I am going to change screens briefly so okay. that folks don't see. I'm going to put the passwords and things at the bottom of the screen here so that I have a method that will set my password to connect to Twitter. I don't want to show that on screen. And get that configured. Um, and I'm actually... No, I can just collapse this and then I can show it on screen. There we go. All right. Let me go back. So this is a real simple method in C Sharp that says, all right, this is how we authenticate. This is how we authenticate with Twitter. I have an authorizer. Uh-oh. Yo. Thank you so much, Walter. Walter, thank you so much for using code Fritz, my man. Thank you, Thank you much. so much for using code Fritz. Uh, whenever you get your coffee, um, that uh, take a picture pops. of it and uh, and send it to us on Twitter or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so all this is doing, I've got my passwords hidden right here on between line 21 and 27, so you can't see them on screen. Yeah. You would normally store them somewhere outside of this um, or actually have it prompt you to log in when you use this. But for now, eh, we're just going to put it up on screen. Uh, I, <coughs> put it right into our code this is something that that's kind of uh it, right this is a proof of concept and we call it an mvp a minimum viable product right got it so i've got that little bit there that's actually going to set up my authentication now what i want to actually query against um against twitter i'm going to set up a collection of statuses that i'm going to grab from there so um let me receive a list of status elements um, and I'll just call these statuses and uh, that's a new list of so which uh which term or hashtag are you going to uh are you going to target specifically so I was thinking of of grabbing the references of at madrinus but we can change up that search term and search for a couple different things if we'd like and kind of pull it together yeah, I mean, I was, you know, I, I got uh, someone uh, in my chat that was asking uh, specifically what you were going to be looking for because they wanted to put out a tweet right now with their coffee. Oh, and, sure. Uh, um, and have it kind of be populated in that. Uh, would hashtag Madrinas? I was originally thinking yeah, of just... Do, I think hashtag Madrinas and just at Madrinas is probably both good. And we also do, we also uh, do hashtag coffee for fuel. Okay. Um, that, that's another one that we've, that we've been including on our packaging and all of our all of our you know website and communications for a long time so we can probably do that one as well okay so uh, make a note of those on your side when i get to the actually yep. doing the search we'll put those terms in so that it'll cool. go collect those so i'm actually going to set this up so that we have a task here that will go get go set that authentication first so we need to log into twitter first before we can start querying it I'm going to set up a context here. So this is a Twitter context. So this is a way for us to say, I'm connecting out to, to Twitter. Everything that I access through this, let's just call that context so it's a little bit easier. All the queries I'm going to make through, through to Twitter goes through this object, this context object here. So um, next steps that I want to do is I want to set up... Um, well, I, I 
one just do that search to start and we'll we'll figure out what our term is here right and we may end up doing multiple terms we may run this a couple times and concatenate together the, da mm -hmm. the data after the fact but let me start with just search and I'll, I'll put a placeholder here because we're gonna do more than just one search so I want to run this a couple different times thank you for the follow dot net Kyle so I've already can you tell friends I've already written a little bit of this just to make sure that we get through this and we've got a good demo can you tell thank you for the follow oh my gosh I I heart Richie appreciate you joining us um, so uh, searching is pretty easy I'm gonna pass in a uh, a Twitter context I'm gonna pass into this method uh, search term search term um, I now Twitter has IDs that they have for all of their uh, for all of their statuses that you're dealing with here so yeah. I need to pass a range for these things so that we know we'll only go get statuses between this range so that I don't I don't ask for too many of these at once so um, I'm just gonna specify a min and max value for those because I'm gonna end up calling search a couple different times here to load up and get all those queries um, now I've already written what this query needs to look like and I've already also written a little bit around um, how I'm gonna have this thing recurse so I'm just gonna copy that code in so we can get to talking about this a little bit. Like a little bit of that cooking show that you're talking about. Yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, um, Julia Child, right? Oh, I'm gonna yeah, make yeah, exactly. I'm gonna make a turkey today. And the turkey's already done within the half hour show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, JAF ten twenty one is here. Look at this. That uh that's uh that's mom. There she is. Hey mom! Oh that's we get some that's, Fritz mom? That's Mama C Sharp Fritz. There she is. Oh hell yeah. Hell, what's up, Mama C Sharp Fritz? There you go. Um let's max out. I can set a maximum status count I've specified here. So I'm gonna set um let's call this max status count. Um I I, I was testing with two hundred. Let me go back to five hundred statuses. So we have the last five hundred statuses that use whatever term it is that, that we search for. So let me show you what this query is. And, and Alex, tell me if this makes sense, what, what it's gonna do here. So I'm gonna say Twitter, search for, um, search for statuses where whatever term we pass in, look for that, right? Whether it's Madrinas, uh, uh, coffee for fuel, right? We'll pass yep. that in, change that up. <coughs> um, I wanna get information about any images that come back and any people that come back as well, where, the the statuses are within the time range that we specify so that kind of makes sense yeah, yeah yeah it's just like a range like you're defining the the range of of what to look for there we go yeah so i'm going to capture well how far back we grabbed because twitter doesn't give you it won't give me 500 results right away it's only going to give me like a page at a time right it'll give me like okay. 15 and then another 15. so i'm just going to capture that and save off these statuses so that they're kept around later and I, I don't want to bring in any of the statuses that are retweets that's like that's like putting your thumb on the scale when somebody retweets something we don't we don't need to put extra weight into those things right. <coughs> um lithix says got excited for a second um check this out lithix in the chat room um i don't have my auto there we go Thought you get Amazon Prime to ship you Madrina's coffee, but does not ship to your part of the world. So close. Oh. Ooh. Lithix, where are you in the world? So that way we know, uh, you know, just where, what's up and where we need to make sure that we're trying to get. But Amazon's the, the one where they're really good with their U.S. operations from a, from a vendor uh, standpoint when it comes to onboarding um, yeah. on the vendor side. But like every single country or whatever, like international, you know, every region will have its own logistical network that you then have to tap into so um yeah he's part, saying part of australia. Our make sure we get out there yeah he's he's down under in australia oh yeah australia that and, and plus shipping to australia can be expensive like lime said though in the chat the bet our k cups are light so our cold brews are loaded up with you know water and everything's ready to go 
Um, also, Cowboy, thank you so much. Hipster Cowboy, thank you for using thank code you. Fritz. Very cool. what's up, man. That oh, is what's yeah. up. Using discount code uh, Fritz at checkout for 40% off. Hipster Cowboy. And now, Walter, guys, thank you so much for, for uh, using his code. Yeah, for picking up some, uh, some coffee. Very cool. So... This is going to query. I could run this right now and we could search for, uh, right? We could just search for hashtag Madrinus just to start and see what this looks like. Um, and I can, I could just do a quick, um, a quick for loop here just to write out what the, what the uh, statuses look like that we find here. So for each, um, uh, let's say, uh, item in the collection of statuses. Right, I can actually have this say uh, console right line, um, and we can just write out. Um, uh, I could just write out the text of it, right? So I can say item dot right, and and check this out. If you look in the little combo box here, in the little IntelliSense box, these are all the properties of of a tweet that we get from Twitter. So we actually get the text, the status ID, information about the user that that tweeted, all kinds of stuff here. The, the items marked with a star, that's Visual Studio telling us these are the most common things that folks use when they're interacting with tweets here. Now, I'm not just grabbing the text. I want to grab the full text of the tweet, and let's write those out just to see if we get a good uh, console, console read line. There we go. Um, there we go. Just to see if we get some good results coming out here. And before I go in, in whole hog to the full 500, let's just pull, pull back the last 10. And we'll okay. we'll eventually get to 500 here. Yeah, let's just see what we get. Make sure that, that this is working properly. First, we don't have any errors. We're writing code live here. Make sure that this works. So here's here it is running inside of uh, command line here on Windows. And it's gonna do its query. There we go. Running in the background, you can see things happening back there. So here we go. Here's some of the most recent messages where it's referencing Madrinus, and it's actually not in English. Look at that. Uh, you know what? I bet you hashtag Madrinus is picking up things in... Oh, that's right. It's picking up a, a, a lot of Spanish. Yeah. So I'll tell you what. A lot of Spanish. Let's change that to an at sign Madrinus to yeah, see if we get... that will be the best. And then we could do uh, coffee for fuel as well. Exactly. Now, I've been telling people, there, there's this funny, there we go. I would recommend coffee for fuel starter pack. Look at that. All right. Score twice the rewards on all purchases through March 1st. Nice. Look at these. <coughs> Hell yeah, man. Look at this. It's working. So we've got, we've got tweets. All right. We got them. Now, now let's, let's drop a little machine learning into this. So... They've actually built this into Visual Studio. This is kind of, this was insane when, when my colleague showed me this. I can right click on this project and I can go down here and say, add machine learning, which is- What? Right? Like, are, are you kidding? You just add machine learning to a project? And- That gives like, that like rattles me, man, at my, at my kind of like my spiritual core a little bit. Like we're just giving up, uh, giving up this, this space to the computer. <laughs> We're giving it, you know what I mean? Like I've seen that, I've seen these move, those movies before. Yeah, so I know where this goes. Uh, it's not going to go that far. It's not going to go that fast. <laughs> I think there's some interesting things that we can do to make it easier to to write code and to analyze things. But Robert Table says the computers are taking over there. No, no, no. Check this out. So we want to do sentiment analysis on our tweets. So I can do other things here, like price prediction or image classification. Um, right. So you can say, well, predict what types of things are out there by doing image classification. One of right. one of the folks, uh, one of the other members of the live coders team, the stream team that I run, actually did some image classification. Oh, Fritz yo, just, okay. Yo, Fritz did. Yo, <laughs> That's, thank you, Fritz. <laughs> thank you. We're using code Fritz. All right. You got 40% off, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So somebody did an image classification. One of our friends here on the stream team did an image classification to identify the different hats that I wear on stream. Oh, really? So it would tell you, oh, Jeff's wearing his Phillies hat this week. He's wearing an Overwatch hat this week. That's insane, dude. That right? is, that's deep. 
So we do this sentiment analysis for that number that's in the middle of the footer there, that, right? That's the sentiment in chat room as people are talking. The the smiley face is the most recent comments there, and it's it's about 80% accurate when you when you break it down. So let me click into, we're going to do sentiment analysis here. Um, I'm going to bring in a data source from a file, and I've actually already got the file on disk here. What a, a reliable source that people use is actually Yelp reviews. The, the University of California did a study on Yelp reviews of all different businesses and grabbed all of the comments and turned it into, uh, turned it into a data set that we can use yeah, for yeah, machine yeah. learning. So it's, it, it's very simple. There's comments like, wow, love this place, and are one or a zero. One, it's positive. Zero, it's negative. And it, it's not even that it's negative. It's that it's not positive. So that's a thing. Um, so we need to specify which column are we going to be predicting? Well, we're going to predict what the one is. The one is the sentiment that we're going to choose. And uh, yep, we're going to input the other column. So I can click now, we'll train this, and I can specify, well, how long do you want it to actually train the model? The longer that you have it go, the more accurate it could become. But we, we've only got a thousand records here. It's not a lot to get a very accurate training, but it'll get us, it'll get us to 80%, and that's pretty good. So I'm gonna go. tell this to train for 20 seconds. And you can see it doing all the machine learning things. This is stuff that people get PhDs to learn about. And we've turned this into a couple clicks inside of Visual Studio. <laughs> like, I mean, uh, even a couple clicks, man, this stuff is but my pay grade. I, that's what I thought too. I'm not a PhD, <laughs> right? I don't know how to do this. So look at that, We're, we've got 81% accuracy here. So I'm gonna wow. click, click through to evaluate and it's showing me that the overall accuracy here is 81. Now I can try the model here and actually key in a phrase and it'll tell me whether it thinks it's positive or negative, right? So I can, I can write something here like, uh, 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 weather is terrible today and I'll click predict and it says, no, that's not right. What, yeah. Something we could key in here, right? Um, uh, I really like this coffee and predict and it says true, positive, right? Good. So our model works. So next it actually generates the code for us and it will add projects into what we've written here. You can already see it added down the side. It added a console app to train the model and it added another one here that actually is the model, right? This is that machine learning model that we're uh, looking at. Um, so what's, the first, what's the difference between the, uh, the first one and the second one? Great question. So the first one is let's train the model, right? This is, we've got some data that we want, that we already know it's positive or negative. Right, we've got some comments in here, oh, okay. and what it's like this a base layer of logic. You got it. So this is where it's going to load up that text file and say, "Well, make the model work with what this is." Yeah, you know, we'll generate so that it knows what that logic is. Yeah, Shlomo says, uh, "Legit staring and wonder how the f this is possible." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you see, my friend, Shlomo? You're going to like this. This is neat. So I've got this information here. And I have a model input that, well, okay, that column name is kind of bogus because that was the first ro row in it. I'm gonna change this so that the name of the input isn't, wow, love this place, but uh, text to analyze. And actually I should uh, make sure I rename this everywhere, right? Text to analyze, there we go. And that'll update it everywhere. And it has here call one, um, that's fine, I'll, I don't, care what that is. My model output though, this is where it's going to give me that prediction. True, false. Yes, it is this. But I'm also going to add here not just a score. I don't, uh, score isn't really what I'm looking for. I want the probability of this. So let me add a property here that's a float, right? Float is a, a write a real number. Um, right. And this is going to be probability. All right, so the probability is that score, like that percentage you see on the bottom of, of the stream there, that 57.3 that you're seeing. And the, the downward arrow is the trend over the last five minutes, positive, negative. And when it gets up over the 90s, of course it's gonna trend down because you can't get too much more positive. 
Um, did the column name attribute get updated for the text too? Uh, I don't, did it? No, the column name is fine. We're good there. So I've got input and output and I should be able to now um, take some of that code that was generated for me over here and use this to interact with the model based on um, the, the tweets that are coming back. So we've already got a way to get the tweets. Now you see here, um, right? This is like you were saying, Alex, this is the, the magic. This is where this is happening. It's literally saying model dot predict and pass in whatever the text is. So right. let me lift this and put it into our code so that it can start doing, um, it can start predicting the value here. So I believe I'm going to, well, let me grab this top using statement, go back over to the initial little program we were writing, drop this in the top up here, and I'm gonna scroll down. I'm still only gonna go for the last 10 messages here, but I'm going to copy this code. Nope, uh, uh, improve the model, that's fine. We can improve the model later. Cancel it. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just done. Just, uh, yes, we're done. Thank you. Um, all right, so in this for each, I would say create a new model input, consume model predict, whatever that input text is. Now, um, I need to change how this behaves because this is actually a very inefficient way that the consume model works here. Um, and I happen to have a little bit of code that'll do that for me. Give me one second here. I have a better format for yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right here, this is me um, with a little bit of work to fix this done ahead of time. So I've moved things around so that I can run this multiple times and it'll run quickly for us. All right, copy that. And paste in those changes. So, uh, friends in the chat room that are, that are developers, I've turned this into, so it's not a static call of this and load up the model every time. I'm gonna create one model that loads up the data that we saved to disk that we learned from those Yelp reviews. Keep that in memory so that I can do these predictions very, very quickly without having to reload that, that model every time. That way, right, it'll run a bit faster. So if I go back over here, instead of saying consume model predict, and getting some input out of this. I'm gonna move that around. I'm actually gonna move that a little bit higher in this um, and uh, yeah, let me change this around just a little bit. I'm going to do the search. Now I'm creating my model. Now there's more things that we wanna get and, and pass on to Power BI than just the um, than just the text. We also want to get the date that it was created, that sentiment percentage. I want to get their location. And if somebody attached an image to it, it'd be really cool to show those images in Power BI. So I'm going to, when we do our dashboard, so I'm going to copy this, go back over here, and inside of this project, let me just create... And this is just a, a, a class. This is an object that's going to store information about, about that tweet and about the data that we're going to show in our dashboard so that we can analyze and I can hand off to you and your team and they can tinker with and, and make sure that, hey, this does make sense. Or, you know, maybe there's something that, that, that you want to use further. I don't know. But we're going to make this available to you and your group. So because everything we do here is open source, right? Now, um, hey there, friends. Let's, I see uh, Angry Little Hamster is here. Hello, hello. Uh, what inspired the name Madrinus is, is the question from our friend. Oh, hell yeah. Hugo Dahl. Let so, me put that question up so that folks can see. There we go, there's Hugo's question. And I'm so Madrinas means uh, the same thing in four different languages, means godmother. Uh, oh. And because our uh, because it does mean the same thing across so many different languages, uh, it means our brand can be understood in a lot of different parts of the world. Um, they asked uh, someone asked earlier about, oh, are we a West Coast thing? Well, we like to just be like a, an internet thing, like a thing that's that's everywhere. So um, 
the name itself being understood in so many different languages in so many different places uh, was a nice symbol for us of that sort of global community that, that we're uh, building a coffee brand for. Very cool. Um, dis is that Disquiet Udemy asks, where should I start if I want to learn AI? That's a really good question. Um, there's a bunch of courses out out there on on services like Pluralsight, um, Wintelect Now, um, LinkedIn Learning, Udemy, Udacity, that'll get you started with some of the big math around this. It is not something that you're going to be able to learn in, in just a few hours of watching one of those courses. Folks study artificial intelligence for years. And we're kind of standing on the shoulders of giants, Alex and I, in being able to analyze and say in just a few minutes here, this is yeah. sentiment analysis. <laughs> like, it, it's it's not easy. <laughs> um, so I mean, it's a it's a huge task. Hey, take these thousands of people and what they've said and try to understand their uh, their opinions and their feelings. Oh my gosh! Yes. Moments. Yeah, yeah, and the fact that folks have been able to build <laughs> models to do that. Um, is just tremendous. Um, last component that I need to get here is called link to CSV. So this is a way for us to write those comma separated value, those Excel formatted files yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty quickly. So that should have added in. Um, I don't need that one. And I should be able, you're, you're going to give me trouble with this, aren't you? Visual Studio. You make me sad. You make me so sad. Go back to that. Try this again. Oh no, it says it installed. Right? And I should be able to... Uh, no. Come on now. CSV helper, that's what I wanted. Oh my goodness, asking for me to wear a different hat today. Something more colorful today? All right, give me a minute here. We'll do something more. You're colorful. getting hat requests. Live? So one of the one of my channel points redemptions is change hats. Oh. Well, you talked about a Phillies hat, right? Are you you? Yeah. Oh big yeah. Phillies fan. Here in the here in the Philadelphia, absolutely. Um, I'll I'll grab that hat in just a minute here after we get some of this uh, some of this data written out. So I just pasted in this little bit of code. So it's going to create a model input. It's going to analyze the full text of the tweets that we bring in and generate a response. It's going to predict what's the, is this a positive or negative statement tweet about this? And I'm going to save off into an out sentiment, into this collection here. Well, here's the sentiment we found. The, the tweet was created at this time. The text of the tweet, where the user says they're located. Now that's not necessarily, right? Because anybody can write in their Twitter profile where they are, right? So it's not necessarily mm -hmm. accurate, but we'll do our best. Whatever that percentage of sentiment is, and if they attached an image, let's grab that image URL and save it off so that we can show it on our dashboard. So if I run this for just the last 10 here, let me run this real quick. And I will, yep, there it goes. It's gonna run that. I'm gonna open this folder. Yeah, 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 I know. You're, you're running Visual Studio, thanks. Because um, it's just going to write out an out CSV file. There we go. You can see. Look. So here, look at look at some of the results right oh. away. Right. Uh, got to enjoy my first Madrinas coffee tonight during an Andy Lasso and Futon multi. It was delicious. The coffee shop and the multi sentiment fifty one point seven percent. Nice. That's awesome. Right. Um, so what is that percentage? So so that per the fifty one point seven. What is that? Uh, uh, scoring. So that is the per the percentage probability that it is positive. So oh, the closer cool. to one hundred percent, the more positive yeah, yeah, the yeah. model thinks it is. Now it's eighty percent accurate on that. So there are some places where it's it's not quite sure, and it's like, well, I don't know. So at two point six percent, it works sixty seven percent of the time, every time. <laughs> you mean sixty percent of the time it works every time, right? So, oh, I wonder what could be in the box. Big thanks, and it says 2.6%. Well, that's, right, it, it's not sure about that. It doesn't know this. We could do some more training there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it would learn better. So maybe we need to do a little bit of filtering. Maybe there's a percentage threshold below which we're like, it doesn't really know what's going on here. 
right? We could probably consider that positive though, right? That tweet? Yes, exactly. But that's why you need to kind of look a little bit further into some of these, right? Okay. Um, here, 83%. Um, right, so here's a bunch of folks that it's tweet. I'm getting this flavor today. I can't wait. Madrinas, you need to partner with or sponsor this lady. She's beyond amazing and reps your products daily. Fantastic. That's very positive. That That's very positive. Clearly. This is cool. Okay. So we've got some information here. Um, <laughs> Robert Robert Tables uh, in, in Twitch chat says, I want to tell you you're a leader and we respect you, but you have too dang many hats. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I have I have 75 different hats that I wear on stream. 75? Yes. Oh, you love and, hats. And I, I, I need to figure out a way. To, so I've got a Madrina's patch or two here. I need to figure out a way to get them on a hat. Um, so that's 75 today. That's right, Hugo. Only today. Because there's always room for more. So this actually wrote out a file with that CSV, with that, uh, with that data for us. Here it is. So if I go to my folder here, that ran down in here and... I just called it out, right? Who cares? It's right. out. But it's Excel format, which means I can open this and it's going to show me. There we go. So I've got, here's the date it was created, the actual text of the tweet, the sentiment percentage is right there, and here's some of the location, right? And uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, there, that's me, Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, El Paso, Texas, Atlanta. There, and here's where I was saying about, well, folks don't always key in something accurate. All around the gaming industry, mm, all right, it's going to ignore that. It's not going to know what that is. Yeah. But we've also got the images that folks tweeted with that. So now, now we can we can go to town. We can unleash this, right? Um, so... So go ahead. Okay, let's look at the sentiment percentage. Yeah, yeah. Column. Let, let me turn this into um, a into a percentage, so it's a little bit easier percentage. to read. There you go. Um, I okay. Can, go. Let, me, let, let me add a couple decimal points here, so it's a little bit. There we go. So, right, some of these, it's like, well, you know what? Yeah, uh, we should ignore that one. That's flat zero, right? Yeah. Something happened there. <laughs> that's. Right. right, there's there's a percentage of accuracy here that we can probably ignore, but, and we may want to go through later and, and as additional steps beyond just what we're talking about. And so this is grabbing what, the most recent... Um, I just grabbed the most 17? recent 20, 20 tweets and, and plotted them, but we're going to go further out. Let's pull in like 500 okay. when we're ready to go here, but we got this working. Right, we cool. We figured out we've we've got this outputting. Yep. And then we're gonna we'll we'll talk about and we'll show the we dashboard here in a minute. Copper Beardy, thank you so much. Look at that cheer. And Bonus twenty. And we'll make a donation to Code.org for that cheer. Thank you so much. Uh, Code.org is is helping folks uh, get science and technology learning into classrooms in Canada and the That's United cool. States. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so we've got a sample here. We know what, how this works. I'm going to do just this first search on just, let's start with just at Madrina, so we can also do uh, coffee for fuel hashtag in, 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 as a second pass through. So I'm going to grab the, I'm going to grab the 500 messages and let's generate that, that initial sentiment report and then we'll open Power BI and actually analyze this put it on a map, generate some bar graphs, and be able to see a little bit and analyze what's going on here. Shlomo, oh my goodness. That is a very kind statement. Let me put that up on the screen here. Watching the live coding straight out of religious experience for you. Well, thank you. Wait, oh, <laughs> wait do you see what we got, got coming for you, buddy. Wait do you see this. Okay, uh, sequence contains no elements. We've actually generated too much data. That's okay. Uh, Go ahead and we've we've pulled too much. Um, pulled too much. I pulled too much data. I didn't put a oh, error no. handler in here. We've we've pulled more data than they have. Um, let me let me do this. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, let's. I, I need to actually say um, if uh, look at this. I'm actually writing some of the code this time. Uh, if response. 
Uh, spell You're it making right, a turkey Jeff. live in front of our eyes. Live. <laughs> Absolutely. That's mostly that's what I do a lot of times here. Yeah. Uh, if responses, if we do get any, then we've got to go do more searching. All right. So if we don't get any, it'll just drop through and finish. Run that one more time. Thank you for the follow. Is that Vulior? Welcome in. All right. And you can see in the background here all kinds of debugging information is flying by. I don't care about that. Who cares about that? We <laughs> want to go get our data. Um, it, Robert Tables <laughs> says we sometimes drop the turkey on the floor. Five second rule. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Robert, that's friend. funny, man. <laughs> All right, so I think we're done the .NET portion of this. We've got our data. It's all saved out in that out file. So what I'm going to do, yep, uh, I've got 36K of data saved there. So um, the next thing that I'm going to open here, this is Power BI Desktop. This is a free tool anybody can download and use from Microsoft. It, it You can do other things with it if you have an Office subscription, but... You can use this to analyze some of your Excel data, some uh -huh. some other data points. We're going to use it to just uh, take a look at what's in that CSV so we can uh, learn a little bit more about the sentiment that we saw. Oh, uh, Shlomo, this isn't C. This is C sharp. Slightly different, but um, we're going to do some cool stuff with what we've delivered here. Where do you see this? All right, so let me go over here. I'm going to go into my Madrina sentiment. And I'm going to just grab this file. Now, I'm, I'm kind of cheating by writing out a file each time. We might actually do this with a, a service that delivers data as tweets happen. All kinds of stuff. Oh, okay. But, right, just to show and go through and, and, and give, give you and the Madrinas team a little bit of a, a sense of what's going on here. I've got this data coming back. And it sees it sees the created at there's the text my sentiment percentage the locations and there's that image URL I think I want to do a little data transformation because the date that comes in I don't care so much about the time but I do care about the date so created at okay. is okay I'm gonna add one more field to the end here one more column thank you for the follow um, <laughs> uh, let me make sure I know how to do this correctly where is it I want to add I don't want to add a column from examples. I want to add another column here. Um, <laughs> I've, I've this is this is a tool I don't use as much. There it is. Add column. Um, this is going to be a custom column. We're going to add to the end. Yep. Um, and we're going to say um, this is a date, and we're going to pull. We need to pull in the year from created at. Um, and the month uh, from created at. So that what I'm ending up doing here is truncating off the information about the time of day. Thank you for the follow. I just saw that follow come through. No syntax errors. Good. Make it happen. We're going to call this, uh, let's call this create date. And this will add a column onto the end here. What do you mean date wasn't recognized? Um, what did I do wrong? Dun, 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 dun. Uh, I think it's dates. Maybe you need to make it all caps and yell at it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Do it. Do it now. Um, <laughs> let's see. I think no? you misunderstood me, computer. Right? Uh, great date. Uh, what's, why isn't my formula working here? Uh -huh. um, <laughs> I thought I could do... Great date. I thought it was date value. Uh, from this isn't the same format the same tool that I was using before I'm going to copy this cancel uh, yeah I know my changes will be lost go away <laughs> be gone right I don't need this right now um, because there was a way to add it from within here hmm <laughs> um Invoke custom f function, I think. Function query, no, no, no. Um, help me out here, chat room. What am I doing here? What am I doing wrong here? Uh, not from examples. Because th what I'm trying to do, it adds another one here. Let me just go with what it's got for right now. Oh, no, wait, 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 here we go. Parse, can I do that? Insert parse date. 
No, it's not gonna let me do it. All right, let me remove this for so now. So right now you're trying to find the ones all from today. Um, not just from today. What I'm trying to do is see the, the date over here. It's a little bit too exact. I want to be able to drill in and say just today, but because okay. these values are so exact, it Power BI doesn't let me say where the date is just. I want to sure, drill like, Okay, yeah, because the field has a little too much data. I can't. It's it can't, too like, precise. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and I don't want any filters on it. Let me save this and and we'll uh, we'll move on here. Close and apply that. Yes, please. All right. So now I have. There we go. It's going to create that. Put this out here. Kelly says I make everything look easy. No, no, no. I'm trying to explain this. You can do this. Anybody can do this, really. Um, so what I'm going to do, let me see if I can if I can say new column here, and if it gives me the format that I'm looking for. Uh, I want to be in this format, this view. Down here looks more like an Excel grid, and everybody knows what Excel looks like. Um, right, so now, let me try that one more time. New column, right, and there we go. Uh, I'm going to call this create date. Hey, hey. Uh, I hit too many keys. My bad. Fat fingers on the keyboard, friends. <laughs> uh, all right. Create date equals. Hey, yes. What are we saying there in the chat room? Transform to date. You've got a Power BI link there. Well, um, there it is. All right. I, I should be able to say date. And I'm going to paste in the rest of those values. That should. No, it's. Hang on, hang on. Date, year, right? And, and this feels exactly like, there we go, that's what I wanted. Um, exactly like Excel, and everybody knows how to use Excel, right? Um, created at, right? And I'll put in uh, day, so we get the day of the month, and this will be created at, and that'll finish formatting our data, and I'll get create date, and see how it has, everything's at midnight because I don't care what time of day. That's that's as granular as I need to be. All right, so I should be able to now uh, go back over here, and now I have a create date. So here are my fields on the right side. So check this out. This is my favorite part, Alex, ready? This I right wanna, here. I wanna create a, a bar graph. So I'm gonna choose a bar graph here, mm -hmm. and I want to add across the bottom the date so I'm just going to check that, and it knows that the date is part of this, but then I'm going to add the sentiment percentage going up the side, and it's already grouping it by year here. But the sentiment percentage, I don't want, um, right, what I'm showing here, this one, the value that's being presented, I don't want it to be a sum. I want to do an average. Now, we can, there's other things in there if we wanted to create like a like a stock graph we could do minimum and maximum or standard deviation so you could see that as a line going across but just by checking those two boxes putting the little graph thing over here i can actually um get in on this and it will let me drill down so let me drill down in so there's 2020 quarter one average sentiment that we're seeing is uh what's the number 43 percent sentiment just on the data we extracted so mm -hmm. in February, still looking at the same because we didn't get out of February. But now here's my dates going across the bottom. Let me change this so instead of it showing a little bit of hierarchy, there we go. So now you can see the dates going across in the average sentiment for each day that we extracted from Twitter. Cool. That's dope. Right? So we could see, look, there's pretty positive on the 19th, the 25th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So we've got some insight here. But like what actually happened on those days? So let's create a table over here. There we go. And I'm gonna put the table here and it's gonna dock. Let me pull that down a little bit. And let me put on the table, uh, let me put the create date. Um, and let me put the sentiment percentage and the actual text. Uh, no, I don't want you over there. I want on this one. So create date, there we go. Sentiment percentage and the actual text. Okay, so we're seeing a little bit of that. You know what? I don't need to see that blown out like this. I'll show just the date. We should oh, that's be so cool. You get all the raw tweets right there. The raw data. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that sentiment percentage, I should be able to... Let me change that back to an average and um, show value as not a percent of the grand total. 
Um, ah, we'll get back to that. So now I've got the average sentiment and I can actually click into one of these and it'll show me just on the 25th. Here's that, oh, that average cool. sentiment and I can look at, oh, well, here's the tweets that that connected to. So look, here's no, somebody that says unacceptable be bold and yeah it's only 20 some percentage um there it was it scrolled off there it is right but that sounds like a reply like a part of a conversation exactly so maybe there's times there that we want to tweak and ignore things right or wait that yeah. as part of a conversation so we're we're already learning something about our data let's add in the location and the image so now I've got the location and the image URL going off the side. But you know what? Those URLs, that I don't care about what that looks like. That That's stupid. I, th this doesn't mean anything to me like this. I actually want to see the image if somebody attached an image from Pittsburgh. Right? So we can get in and clean this up just a little yeah. bit more. If I go over and select the image URL... I can go to my column tools here and I can say, well, that data is actually an image URL. So there we go. When I go back over here, now inside of my uh, table here, I can actually see the image and what's going on here. So let's, let's make that image just a little bit bigger here. So the grid, I can make the grid height. If there's an image in it, let's make it as big as possible. So we can see a little bit more there. Somebody's walking their dog in Pittsburgh when they said, uh, this is exactly how Julie got me to take her on a walk. Okay, I guess Julie's their dog. But there's their sentiment on the 21st. Yep. Cool. All right. So, but that's in Pittsburgh. We can actually add a map now that shows all that stuff. Let me grab, we'll put a map over here. And for the map, let's put... Let's put their location on the map and let's make the value their sentiment. So uh, the location is here and the size of these dots is the sentiment percentage. Cool. So we're here on, let's go to February 19th. Let's go to somewhere where there's some pretty good sentiment. And I can zoom in here on the states and I can see right here in Chicago, somebody was, right? Well, yep. Wait a sec. Maybe we need to do a little bit more. There was that Chicago. Let's make the tooltip the actual text. Right? So now when I mouse over Chicago, uh, come on. Come on. Show me that tooltip. You're not, uh, oh, I put it on the wrong one. Hang on. Over here. It's on <laughs> here. We'll put it in that tooltip because I want to, I want to see what that person says in Chicago just by mousing over it. So there's That's Chicago, really cool. and I can mouse over. Finally giving this Madrina's Coffee a taste, and boy is it yummy. 77% sentiment there. Look at that. Yo, that's what's up. So From the Chicagoan. Yeah. So very quickly, right here in, in, gosh, just the past hour that, Alex, we've been talking together, we've done some analysis of the last 500 tweets that folks have mentioned Madrina's, loaded it up, put together just a little bit of information about... Mm -hmm what folks are seeing, what folks are talking about. If we go to today, we can see, look at this. we got a bunch of folks on the East Coast chatting. I wonder who this person is in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's me. That's you. <laughs> Hell yeah. Right, right? Valley Forge. That's us. So, right, we can, <laughs> and there's, there's the tweet that it captured over here, and we can do things to make this a little bit easier to see and read. But that's what I wanted to, to show here today is that, look, we can pull together, analyze data quickly, easily with all kinds of stuff here. Right. So here's this one person in Georgia. In, in Georgia, we've got two comments. We could see very positive on this one day, uh, asking about when will Mocha be back in stock for the starter pack. Gotta have to try that black cold brew. So, fantastic. Right, meat and cheese, there's your dot. Yeah, look at that. Yes, so, meat and cheese, he's the, he just tweeted. He wanted to make sure he knew the term. So we would have to run another extract, but... No, I mean, like, he tweeted maybe, like, 30 minutes ago or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Your dot in Baltimore. Yeah, all right, let's zoom in on Baltimore there. Right, there we go. Good morning, Madrinas. There it is. With Ionic Framework, Madrinas, C-sharp Fritz. Nice. There we go. <laughs> right, and there's your picture from outside. Look at that. Yep. So... This is so cool, man. 
simple. There's a lot of different places that we could go here. Uh, and I mean, we've just touched the tip of the iceberg, right? We could filter this. Like you were saying, we could bring in that coffee for fuel hashtag. We could analyze yeah. that as well. Maybe that's a different uh, color dot that we put out there. But I mean, gosh, a lot of power at our hands here. And uh, properly caffeinated folks can probably do this a little bit faster, right? <laughs> Oh, big time, man. I drank coffee today, and uh, it's my first time in a couple of days since I was sick. Mm. And I felt how fast my body and my and my mind was moving. So I can only imagine the productivity increase that you get with something like this. Oh, my god! You gosh. get into that flow. <laughs> yeah. So this is Power BI that we used. We used a little bit of machine learning with ML.net is the library that we use with C Sharp to just write a little bit of code, analyze those tweets, and do a search. Um, I'll send this source code out after I pull out my user ID. I'll send this source code out to my GitHub so anybody can download it, give it a try. Um, the Power BI, it, there's nothing custom in here. Um, I'll save this off and uh, after uh, after I get off stream a little bit later, um, I'll send this over to, to you, Alex. You can share with your team, Hell do whatever yeah, you, you'd like with this it. This is obviously really useful because this is just a way to easily dimensionalize um, all the data when you get a lot of the regional oh stuff gosh. you get a lot of the time and date stuff and you get to just interact with it this is really cool man thank you for thank you for doing this with with our brand and with with our sentiment oh gosh that it was a, a pleasure and and right uh, things that that we didn't know we'd be able to find start popping up when you look at this right my gosh there's we don't have anybody in south america talking about madrinas there's right. a couple folks in india India? What? They're talking about Madrinas in India. <laughs> and there's our Australian friend. Right, There's there you go. So, cool, right? There's some things that maybe there's a sales opportunity. There's folks over in of these course. locations. All kinds of ways that, that folks can look into this. What what I think is interesting, I didn't even get into. Let me show you this before, before I let you go. You can right-click on these bars and you can say Analyze. And oh explain. no! You're gonna bring out that machine learning button again. And yeah, it's it, there's machine learning behind this that will say, well, why did it change? And it's gonna look at it and say, St. Louis and Eglin Air Force Base in Florida had the most significant increase based on location, and it'll show you reference here to Fox TV. The vanilla is so good, <coughs> right? Yeah. So and, oh yeah get some insight you know here are the folks that are changing the way and right you'd be able to drill in and learn more information about of those course. folks so just so the tip why of the there iceberg. might be an increase on this day versus another yeah yeah oh well these locations cool right great yep. stuff oh, yeah i love the power of this tool it really makes it um makes it easy for for folks like us to learn a little bit more about our data without actually having to go to school and learn all the things. Yeah. Right? Or having to sift through every single tweet and make the decision, yeah. uh, like just the subjective decision. Oh, this one's good, this one's not good. And you just get to dimensionalize it all and interact with it. Absolutely. Um, Hugo has a good comment here for us. He, he's, he's right here. Could we enhance the model scoring by adjusting individual scores? Um, I think meaning like is that like post analysis, like tweaking of each single one, being yeah. like, oh, this one's we're, we want to dial this tweet up. It's not really a forty six percent. It's really like an eighty seven percent or something like that. We could do that. We could also take some of the data that we know is is valid and feed that back into the model to try and get it past that eighty one percent, get it closer to ninety percent. Yeah. So we don't have to do adjustments. You're right. And and then then interesting so it's things like manual, happen. So it's like so it's like manual tuning effectively. Yeah. yeah, it's like it does most of the work, and you go in and like fine tune and calibrate all the tweets. Absolutely. It, let's teach the model to be more accurate. Right. So, uh -huh. and and then train it some more. Yeah. And well, I I think there might actually be some. We we may be tricking the model a little bit here, Alex. When we look at it, maybe the model's tripping up on some of the. Uh, the Twitter handle references here. Okay. Right. Maybe if we change those to got rid of the at sign, so it was someone's name, or we got rid of right. all of the tagged names when we tell it to analyze, it might. It's probably analyzing those words and saying this is neither pot. You know, it's just it's just nonsense. It's like that part of that gobbledygook. Exactly. And it right. Factors into the score. Does it think Direwolf Digital is negative? 
Maybe. Exactly. Maybe. Or it, or is it just adding that as like a total amount of a total word count and taking the positive words divided by the total number of words and then skewing the data downward it, because of that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting, man. I, I I love the concept of sentiment analysis going through here, and there's there's ways to do sentiment analysis against images and all kinds of machine learning around this data, and and having a nice data set like this. Um, it makes it fun to to analyze and, and pull out a little bit of information. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, and see, sentiment analysis is something that we've always, you know, when you when you have your marketing hat on, it's mm. something that you, it's like an objective that you want to achieve. It's like, okay, there is all this conversation that's happening out in the world. How can uh, how can we understand it, dimensionalize it, interact with it, learn from it? Yeah. Um, because I mean, you know, as a brand team, you have a you have a uh, your Twitter notifications, and you can just go through them. So it's just this pool of, of raw data. You don't really know what to, what to, how to make sense of. And what you just did was really, really neat being able to do all this within an hour. Right. Uh, there are a lot of services that charge tons of money for sentiment analysis. You have no idea their accuracy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so to be able to come in and, and actually see it and see it be done is really, really, is really neat on the marketing side. Oh my gosh. And, and look, those folks that have models out there and, and they've trained and they've got the, the marketing companies that report on that stuff, yeah, they've been training and tuning their models. But if you're able to do this kind of thing quickly and you get similar numbers, right? If you if you effectively take the Pepsi challenge against against a service that's selling this and you get similar numbers, do you really need to pay that much? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But um, it, it democratizes the ability to do high-end analysis like that. So, so I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Shlomo, you were saying you, you were you were kind of amazed at how we were able to do analysis there. What do you think out there in the chat room? Oh yeah, Shlo loves this stuff. So you got him, uh, you got him mesmerized. <laughs> got him lit up. <laughs> yeah, this is the type of you know content like this is it's like hypnosis. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Robert Table says in some situations every half percent matters. Yeah, you're right. Um. Oh, but uh, in in analysis like this. Eh, half percents for sentiment doesn't matter, but I agree eh, when you're in a self-driving car and you're trying to decide between an animal, a pedestrian, and a traffic cone, eh, that matters. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Hugo says that Shlomo's off learning C-sharp to play with Power BI and machine learning. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, I'll make the source code available to, to everybody here. It'll be out on the GitHub later. Um, along with the model, um, and I'll, I'll even save off the, the CSV that we created. Um, unless, do we have time? Do you want to do another a quick run on that coffee for fuel hashtag? We could do that analysis. By all means, man, absolutely. I'm here, okay. I'm hanging. All right, so let's do that real quick. I'm going to save that as a different file here. I'm going to okay. save off and call this uh, coffee for fuel so that we can have two data sets here. Uh, and, and actually... It's that we actually use the uh, four instead of F O R. Fantastic. So the search that I'll do then is, uh, right, coffee for fuel like that. Exactly. Okay. All right. So, uh, give me the last five hundred statuses and uh, go. Right. And and five hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It, and so trying funny. to. Hey, Hugo. Thank you so much. Hugo's one of our our moderators, a lead moderator here on the channel. Thank you so much for, for picking up some coffee today. Yeah, yo, Hugo, thank you so much for using code Fritz. You're getting 40% off your Madrina's coffee order. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, like I said, if it's your first time or if you knew you love it and you're just taking the opportunities to load up, either way, thank you guys so much. Thank you, uh, Hugo, and everyone else that has loaded up. Uh, and then just oh, yeah. a reminder for everybody, if you guys do want to use discount code Fritz, you can get an opportunity uh, for a little while longer to get 40% off uh, your entire order using oh. discount code Fritz. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, gosh, friends, uh, don't forget there's a there there's a giveaway that we're running right now. You saw the tweet there. Register at that URL. You can click the link that it's just below us here on Twitch, and that'll take you through so you can register. And there'll be there'll be a drawing. I think it's it's tomorrow. It's on March first, and we're gonna give away five um, the five Madrinas. Uh, what is it again? I'll make sure I, I Madrinas fuel cups. There we go. Yeah, exactly. Which Very are which are fuel cups? They're the uh, the little pods for that you can use in a Keurig. Nice, nice. Um, all right, so it ran through, and and we've got some really cool 
responses here, right? Going live till noon with more pumpkin uh, pumpkin days game fun. We're trying to get our first moo cow sipping on Madrina's cold brew and some advanced GG blah 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 and coffee for fuel. Stay focused. Hell yeah. Right, Madrina's is the best cold brew coffee, winning coffee for fuel. 58.9. Nice. So looks like we've got a pretty good group here. Um, oh, yeah. So that looks, all seems to be relevant. That that that's relevant, but that right there is a number that feels like a miss, right? And that's why I'm saying well, maybe because it says the word pleased. Right. That feels like a miss. Zero seven. But maybe maybe we we tune the data that comes in. and We say you know what? Ignore everything below five percent. So all right, okay. that file is saved out. I'm gonna go back over to this exact same. Um, dashboard that we have here and I'm actually yep. going to tell it go get some more data uh, get data and I'm going to it's the same format so I'm going to apply the same changes to it the first is Sunday oh yeah that's right thank you Chris um, silly me yeah tomorrow's the 29th alright so we're going to go get some some text and reach down into this one and grab this and that and here there it is there's my CSV for this one and so it should all be the same again. Load that, and we'll we'll put that same create date filter on it. And uh, we can also put a big we can put a big where on here. So there's the coffee for fuel. Um, let me. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna copy that create date. Um, let me see if I can grab that here real quick. Right. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Insert parsed date. No. Come on. Uh, not this one. Where'd it go? Hmm. If I say new column, is it going to put me in that same dialogue and I can change it? No. That's not what I want. Um, good. Go away. Create date. What do we got here? There it is. I'm going to copy that exact same thing and just bring mm -hmm. it in on the other one here. Right, so new column. Yeah, working on it. There we go. Paste. Well, that's not it. That's not what I copied. I'm, I'm going to have to... Come on now. Fine, I'll just... That... Right, month. I should have been able to copy this in, but you know what? And you're jamming it out, though. Right? It's like, we did this once. I can do this again. <laughs> you know? Like, pfft. All right, so uh, what do you mean error? Uh, equals Is date. doing the date error thing again? Am I missing? Oh, I've got an extra parenthesis in there is what's going on. There we go. All right. Heck yeah. Hey, look at that. Dr. Poindexter. That's actually Robert Tables. Thank you so much. Um, how'd that come through? Toxic. Can you tell Alex to unban me in his chat? <laughs> what? Uh, don't worry about Toxic uh, Mama. Don't worry about him. Okay. Uh, so there we go. Hugo asks, how difficult would it be to input more live data into Power BI, either directly linked from Twitter or hourly updates? It's, that's a good question. So we're just running this as a, <clears throat> as a command line tool to generate some data. We could instead run this as like a web service, a website that would run a query and, and tell you for the last hour or, how, or however long, here's the data, right? Um, and, and actually output that and consume it in Power BI. If it was at that kind of a fixed service like that, to be able to take that extract data and bring it in here on a periodic basis, it's a heck of a lot easier to do that going forward. .NET Kyle. Wow, thank you guys, so much. Thank you so much for using code Fritz. Uh, right, you said the other one was Robert Tables, right? Yeah, that was Robert Tables. Robert Tables and .NET Kyle, guys. Thank you so much for using discount code Fritz. Very uh, you guys cool. got 40% off your order, and we're doing a lot of analysis on the tweets right now. Guys, by all means, when you get your coffee, uh, feel free to tweet at us. We love to uh, we love to see that it, you know, that it got there okay and that you're enjoying it and that we get a chance to at least say thank you again. So, uh, guys, thank you for, for using code Fritz at checkout. 
very cool stuff. Thank you very much. So I'm adding in here, I'm gonna change this so it's that. We should be able to get a second data point here. So now, when I layer these in, I actually wanna put those side by side. Side by side bar graph, there we go. So now the dark blue, um, we should, uh, can I change? Nuts, it's not gonna, it, they're both gonna look the same because they have the same name. <laughs> Um, the one is, I want to say this, the one should be the sentiment percentage for coffee for fuel. And the other one is the sentiment percentage for, um, for the Madrinus reference. And <coughs> <coughs> I can't tell the difference. <laughs> um, the two references? Yeah, I can't tell the difference between the two. Um, there's a way to do that. Is it dark oh, blue here we is go. the can... fuel one, I think. Um, well, let me just... One second. I might be able to, to find this. Um, because, see, when I look at the values here, it doesn't tell me which one is which. Um, let me turn one, one off. So this is the coffee for fuel. Let me rename. And this is uh, coffee for fuel. That's a three. <laughs> coffee three fuel. That's eh, not working. Um, and I'll bring in the, the other one. This is then, uh, right, and I'll change this back to average and rename. And this is, come on, give me the rename. There we go. And this is uh, at Madrinus references. So now we can see up in the up in the top there, the dark blue is the references to at Madrinus. The light blue okay. is coffee for fuel. So, coffee for fuel actually looks like it's pretty stable. That can't be right, that it's stable all the it's way the across. same thing. That can't be. Same number. There's got, you would expect a little volatility. Right? That doesn't feel right. Um, Wait, and, did it flip? Because I felt like dark blue was the, was the one that was even across the board before. Uh, no, the, the dark blue is... No, maybe, not, I'm, maybe I'm going insane. I don't know. No, no, no. I think, you, I think we're good. Okay. Let, let me add into the table over here all the. Oh, these are, it's going to add these as a separate one here. Let me do a separate table for uh, for these tweets. All right down in here somewhere. There we go. And this one uh, created date, not that one. This one. Um, the location, the sentiment, the text, and we'll put the image on the end. And let me change that create date back to just a date. There we go. So now when we're zoomed in on here on the 27th, see, it's not formatting this one. Hmm. I would expect it to format. It, it automatically formats these other ones based on the mm -hmm. date. Um, but it didn't for me, and I don't know why. Probably, I'm wondering if it's because we have separate, two separate data sets here. Um, we can pull that together later if we want it. But uh, da, 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 da. this one, the sentiment percentage should be an average. Yeah, it's 40. That doesn't seem right. I don't think we're getting the, the true value. Yeah, I don't think we're getting the true values in this one. Um, you're right. Let me... Go in here and let me pull those extra. Oh, oh. Um, developers, developers, developers. let me pull that out. Thank you for the follow. Um, so we could actually just create another page. That see, look at that. That's weird, right? Um, yeah. Something's not right there. It's not reading that data right. Uh, da -da 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 out. That's the create date and the value. Change that to an average. Okay, that was that one. So we can actually create duplicate pages here and just make the next page the coffee for fuel, right? So this is at Madrinus and make this one uh, coffee for fuel. Uh, I, I didn't spell it right. Do, 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 do. So let me get rid of that table over on this side and over here this one instead of coming from that data set I'll change so it's 
uh, create date, sentiment, it was location, uh, let's image, come on, and then the text, come on, I've got my mouse turned up way too sensitive, I can't click on things, alright, and format this back, and make the sentiment percentage and average again, okay, and I'm going to take this one and turn it back into create date. And we'll put the average of the sentiment down here. There we go. Now we're seeing a little bit more information. And I'll take the map and redo the map so it goes against... Um, so the location here is going to be this location. Um, tool tip will be the first text and the size of those will be the average of the sentiment just like we did before. And now we can see folks didn't use the, the coffee for fuel in these days. But like here on the 20th, Right, very positive vibes, and yeah, yeah, yeah. people got their shipments. Dope. Right, and we can That's zoom really back. Cool. So, so it basically will just omit days where it wasn't used. Exactly. Or like it won't show a bar, obviously, on those days. Yep. So, and we only had one person give their location in Texas, so we get one big dot there, and it's it's their fridge full of of Madrinas and how happy they are that they got their coffee. Hell yeah, man! Nice. Right. So cool. Back on the nineteenth, here's somebody who's happy, and they've got. Looks like looks like they got a, a can with the baby Yoda there. Madrinus and Alex Davis always helping me get through the work day. Coffee for fuel. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, that's in Wisconsin. That not them, but the other one here is fueling up with my favorite Madrinus in a Yeti in Wisconsin. Nice. Very cool stuff. This is awesome, man. Thank you for doing this with all with our search terms. Yeah, they, and I, I love how how the tools make this easy and and proves out it's a pretty good product people like it hell yeah dude are you kidding like this, that's why we we knew we had to make a company is because we figured out how to make this coffee taste so damn good yeah. so we're like all right we, we got to do something with this now and and you know being able to work with you and you know other creators is uh is an awesome way for us to to get out there and make sure people uh have a reason to try our coffee so obviously we have your discount code and we have your giveaway going on but uh I know that it, it's got like a 99% like I know anybody that does actually end up trying it they're going to freaking love it. So and that right um, so that's on the consumer ratings on the product pages themselves that where exactly. folks actually buy. Yeah, there you go. Very cool. Um I'm going to save this off um and I'll give your folks instructions if they want to be able to compile and run this on your side. But when every time that we we go to wrap up a stream here um, I actually change off of this music and I change to, well, you're probably going to recognize the music that I use for this part because it's that last minute when you're wrapping up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> um, how much Power BI can be turned over to those in the know like marketing and sales, asks Hugo. Oh, a ton. A ton. If they know the data, right, they can just grab those data points and start massaging and creating visualizations. And the analysis that you can ask about inside these graphs. There's actually, where is it? Let me show you. Um, I haven't done this in a while. There's uh, KPIs you can drop on here as well. Gauges, all kinds of visualizations, but somebody put together, there it is. You can actually put together Q and A, a Q and A box to Whoa. appear and ask, literally ask questions of your data. So, um, to the computer. To the computer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, where did yeah, it go? You're, you're starting to rattle that that part of me where it's like, uh oh, mm -hmm. we're interfaces. We got some iRobot stuff happening here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, down here? Come on, give me one of those. There it is. So now ask questions about your data, right? Um, sentiment in Texas. Right? There you go. Sentiment in Texas. All right. So what's the sentiment cool. in Texas? And uh, yeah, in Texas. That's what I meant. Right? So here it's showing me, here's 
th that Got one it, yeah, yeah. that was in Texas on this one date, and they're not uh, too positive. And uh, why why would you try? Well, try it. Don't buy a whole case. Buy a little bit. And we have sampler packs. It's a great question. We have sampler packs you can try. Uh, we also you have an Amazon Prime where it's it's it stays as low cost as it probably could be, you know, just from a sample perspective. But it's a really good question. So something that's something easily a salesperson, marketing person can follow up on. Just asking yep. questions in here. Really neat stuff. Um, let me check in. So I I check in all the code that we have here. Yep. Um, the, the new Captain Picard computer, Madrinus, dark, <laughs> hot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let me go down into that project here, and I'm going to uh, create a repository so that we can send this up to your fine folks. I'm going to move this off to the side so I can delete my passwords out of it, and uh, I can share those with your team later. So save those. See, they were right there. So that's all saved. I'm going to close out of this. Add that. Um, yep, yeah, let's add all those things. Um, oh, rat. No, don't add all those things. Stop that. That was a bad idea. Bad idea. Um, <laughs> no, because now I'm adding in all kinds of things that, that shouldn't be shipped into source control. Um, yeah, yeah. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Let me see. How do I want to do this? Um, let me do... Uh, that. Yep. Yeah, you're you're gonna choke on me. Thanks. Thanks so much. Uh -huh. Let me get rid of get rid of this repository. Thank you. Um, there's Sentiment in Texas sounds like a band name. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, like one of those like like early two thousands like uh like emo bands. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're, they, you're... Like, pro they, they probably did the soundtrack for American Pie. <laughs> the soundtrack. <Sentiment> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh I'm gonna grab this is an ignore file that's specific to the type of programming that I'm doing here. Um and I'm gonna write this out. This is for our technical friends here, a git ignore that says don't bring in all those other things. All the uh, stuff that's specific to me in here. Now I'll add... Uh, I'll start off with that file. Commit that. That is... Um, I'll just call it first. Doesn't matter. And add the rest of the things. There we go. Um, and this is a sentiment analysis uh, of Madrinus. Uh coffee on Twitter live on Twitch amazing fantastic and I will put this so we share things as, as developers out onto a service called github that has okay. all of our source code so I'm just going to make a space here for folks to find our code that we wrote together here um, I need to create a new repository look at that handsome mug oh my gosh no 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 <laughs> That's a handsome mug. See what I did there? <laughs> oh, damn. The turn. The, the turn. turn. Uh, let's see. Let's call this Madrina's Twitter sentiment. And I won't add a description. This is public. We've done all this together. Initialize with a readme. Um, we're going to make this MIT licensed. Anybody can get a copy of this. It's all simple source code that we wrote here. Um, everything is public. But I'm going to grab this. And the data that that your team adds later, right? Yeah, that'll be specific to yours and where where you develop and take this. So, uh, angry little hamster, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Uh, no, I need to do something like that. Oh, it's gonna be a pain in the neck here for me. All right, fine. Um, so let's do git push origin master force. There it is. And if I git pull origin master. So this is what this is doing is pushing it out 
to GitHub for us. There we okay. go. And now if I go over here and refresh, there's all the source code and we will grab this link. If you're in chat and you want to take a look, there's the link so you can go download your copy of the source code that we wrote. Even that Power BI file is right here. The files that we generated, the output, um, are not included that we did that we got from the sentiment analysis. Um, but I think the model is saved in here. If we just take a quick look over here. Yeah, the model we generated from the Yelp comments, right, to train and teach it how to do sentiment analysis is already loaded and available right there. So there you go. Um, Cat Askey Feet asks, what's my favorite project I've worked on? Ooh. Um, working on software is, is, has been such a treat for me. Um, and, and because it, I, I think you saw a little bit here, Alex, that, that, that magic that you get of when you get to the end and it's like, oh my gosh, look, yeah. there's something cool yeah. that happened. Something cool to interact with. Yeah. So um, before I started at Microsoft, before I started at companies before that, I worked for a little company that made automated substitute teacher placement software. That sounds, that, that's like really long, but, um, it, and weird, but it breaks Just like the, a sign substitute teachers to the open opportunities. You got it. So if there was, if Mrs. Smith is going to be out at the dentist appointment on Friday, um, Mrs. Smith could go on our website and indicate that she's going to be out for mark herself absent for that day. And the system starts making outbound phone calls mm. automatically to so replacements. Re to replacements to eligible substitutes that are qualified for Mrs. Smith's class. Done. Right? That's cool. So cool. So such a simple idea and there's so many workforce placement types of scenarios beyond just right. education that would be really cool with that kind of service. When did you start drinking coffee? Oh my gosh. Um I didn't start drinking coffee until I got to the end of um, the end of high school, beginning of college, was when I started. I, the natural I was kind time. Of, yeah, I was kind of a late bloomer. There were yeah, that's a that, no, no, no. That's a that's a definite like natural time. Once people, you're not a kid anymore. You start doing adult things, and you realize, oh man, I gotta like be attentive, and I gotta start focusing. And <laughs> yeah, you need some some bean juice to get you through. But it, and it it was also right. I'm up late studying. Right, doing my labs and, and doing these things for, for class. You have to wake up at six in the morning so you can drive out <laughs> oh, to yeah. campus. So it, okay, you're 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 literally burning the candle at both ends. And uh it it, it worked well, out well for me. I, I'm glad that we've been able to work with you uh, specifically because I feel like coffee can help you so much just in this environment, you know, where you need to focus. I, I had a uh, a manager who used to say to me that um developers are just a, a funny word for turning turning coffee into code <laughs> yeah oh yeah okay it's kind of like the, it's like the input and the output idea yeah oh yeah you put you put coffee in and out comes the pro the, the, and, the, the and out comes software <laughs> yeah uh, um so it's it's been a real cool thing that's um, awesome man well hey thank you for taking me through oh, all this this was great and thank you so much for joining us and uh, of course I, i'm going to set up for a raid here and, and i'll catch you next time hell yeah man thank you so much again uh, and then just uh, uh, one more announcement for everybody. If you guys uh, want to try Madrinas or if you've tried it before and you know you, you dig it, you guys can use Fritz's discount code on our web store now. You have a little bit of time left to get 40% off your entire order. Just use discount code Fritz. Like we've seen a couple people in chat do with the on-screen alert. But then yeah. we also have a giveaway. If you guys want to try like 100% free coffee, we got the giveaway link that's going around. We're just really excited to be working with Fritz and be able to hang with you guys today. So thank you for letting me and Shlo come crash the party, everybody. Oh, it was great. Uh, the sentiment analysis is also is, is, is super valuable. It's like a really cool just thing that we always, like I said, when you have the marketing hat on, it's always something that you talk about. And as as an instructor, as somebody who, who wants to get more folks interested in software, when I see comments like this from Shlo, they want to do so many things like this, that lights me up. That's what, yeah. I, what I live for is when people say, Cool. I learned something today. I want to try and do more with this. Code's out there. Give it a shot. You can download uh, visualstudio.net yeah. and give it your own compiler. Yeah, and like like Hugo asked, uh, I started drinking I was five years old. Woo! I was drinking black coffee at five years old. I also started gaming at a really young age, so I like 
you know, gaming at five, drink coffee at five. I knew what I wanted to do with my life. Oh my gosh! It, it's I knew it. It, it was always a dream <laughs> for me to be able to to build games, and so th this blew me away, Alex. The first when this happened, I when I got my job at Microsoft, I thought I'd be working on building web things because I was always a web guy. Yeah, and and I was I was you know put on a project to to work on the package manager, and I started getting phone calls from the folks that make Xbox. I'm like. Wait a sec. Yeah. <laughs> I make something now that's used by Xbox. Are you kidding? That's incredible. Like, uh, okay. So I don't work with them in, in, as much anymore, but um, I contributed my fair share to Xbox and Windows, and, and we're often doing things like streaming here and teaching. So, well, you that's have a really good day. Cool, man. This was great. And uh, Yeah, man, this was so fun. Like I said, thank you for the time. Thank you for hanging. Uh, and uh, thank you more than anything for working with us, my man. Oh, it's great. Um, really love the product. On board. Cool. Um, all right, brother. Enjoy the rest of your day. One love to you, and goodbye, everybody. Thank you for letting me in slow hang. All right, see ya. All right, take care, Jeff. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was great with Alex. So, and I, I like showing things, te technology to folks, and and a little bit of source code. They, they don't know everything that's going on, but they, they're they learning and they're seeing here's how the pieces fit together. And to get that kind of feedback from, from some folks that aren't entirely C-sharp developers, .NET developers, Power BI users, and they see how the pieces fit together and it lights up and says, ooh, I want to learn a little bit more about that. That's something that I think we as technologists need to do a good job of explaining and sharing and getting that type of feedback from them. Really glad that they could join us today. Thank you for the follow, Lime Grove. Coding Bandit, what did you miss? Um, we, uh, we, we bought a new Buick. We, um, we, we wrote some code. It blew up. Um, there, was, there was some Power BI magic. <clears throat> we, we analyzed a bunch of data for our friends at Madrinas Coffee and generated a little Power BI dashboard that shows some of their data. So you can click around and see a little bit more about what's going on. Neat stuff. Really neat stuff that uh, we're happy to be able to share with them and give them some insights into, into a, little bit of, a little bit of the data, a little bit of what's going on with the, the folks talking about an internet-based company. Cam does cool stuff. Uh, very cool. I didn't know you were here. Welcome in. We secretly replaced Jeff's Madrinas coffee with new Folgers crystals. Jeff was not happy. No, that's true. I wouldn't be. Oh my gosh. Um, let me set up for a raid here. Let's let's get ready to head over and see who else. You know who? I do know who else is streaming today. I do, I do, I do. Did she start streaming? Because there is somebody who I absolutely want to make sure that we raid today. Um, let me take a quick look. Please, 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 please tell me she started streaming and she's not going to be going a little bit late today. Um, come on now. No, she hasn't started streaming yet. All right, then I'm going to vamp a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to kill some time here so we can see, make sure that, that my raid target that we're going to get to here is streaming a little bit. Um... Right, we're, it's okay. We can we can kill some time here, right? We can. You have no idea what you're dealing with. I do know what I'm dealing with here. All right. Is Lime Grove streaming? She's awesome and was just here. Um, there's somebody that I want to raid today who's on her last daytime stream because she's going back to work, and I want to make sure that we we show her a little bit of support and and help out uh, her stream today. Um. So there was um th there was a lot we covered there today. I want to make sure that right the, the the source code, the things that we built, the stuff that we shared out um all throughout was tremendous. That that raffle is going to still be available. That'll be drawn on Sunday, March 1st. Um or I wonder if they actually meant the second on Monday. But um, make sure you click through on that raffle. It's a simple form to register, and you can uh, you might win one of five um, the packs of right five. Uh, uh, what's it called? You were the hat beard, says Shlomo. I don't remember. I don't remember. 
Oh my goodness. Um, it, you can win one of five. Th there's the thing. There's the description here. Madrinus fuel cups. That's what I want to make sure I say say it correctly. I didn't want to call it. I don't even want to go. I, anyways, um, what was it, it? Not at TwitchCon. TwitchCon would have been typically where I see folks. I haven't been to St. Louis. If you're in the St. Louis region, but Knoxville, not PAX East. It would have had to have been TwitchCon. Never been to PAX East. Yeah, yeah. PAX East up in Boston. That's this weekend. Folks are there. I always think it's funny how the green screen kind of does funny things to the Madrinas uh, can here because it's got green down the side. Looks kind of funny. Um, so I, um, I think n not Boston. Boston. Okay, boy, I said it the right way. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, <clears throat> uh, look at that. Robert Tables with a tweet. Got some Madrinas coffee on the way. I'll do a review on stream when it gets here. Coffee for fuel. Nice. Nice. Look at that. So um, I think there's there's a lot to be said about it. And this kind of feeds into a little bit of the discussion that I had with, uh, with Greg Herman the other day on the Dev Intersection channel. When you can build things... That build APIs, give folks a way to get data into a tool like Power BI here. You create those citizen developers, right? And this was what Hugo kind of asked about, it, right? You create those citizen developers who don't need to know C Sharp, don't need to know a programming language. There are hundreds of businesses, thousands of businesses out there that run just on the back of Excel spreadsheets and access databases. Things that do just enough data work to be able to give them the insights, help them make those strategy decisions. Like, you know what? We've got a lot of folks here in, <clears throat> in North America. <coughs> Maybe we need to do a little bit of a concerted sales effort in Europe. Or, hey, there's folks that are interested in India. Can we do something to put a warehouse, put something in, in India, make it accessible to folks over there? I don't know. Those are business decisions that you can, business discussions that you can enter into when those citizen developers who know the domain. I'm a developer. I know how to write code. Um, I've been to TwitchCon 2018 and 2019 um, in North America. I'll be at TwitchCon 2020 in both Amsterdam and in uh, San Diego this year. And we're going to bring a lot of the live coders to both events. Those The live coder stream team, 120 of your favorite folks that are writing code live here on Twitch, you're going to find them at at both events. Um, we're really looking forward to that. We're gonna, uh, folks like InstaFluff, Robert Tables, you're going to be able to meet at at one or the other, or maybe even both of the events. Uh, Coding Bandit, we're going to try and get Coding Bandit out to San Diego. Make sure that that happens. You're right, Coding Bandit. Data scientists are amazing, right? And this is right. I, I said this with Alex, and and very much th this is this is true we as software developers are standing on the shoulders of giants there are people that are a heck of a lot smarter than us than us that are doing the data analysis that puts stuff into our hands as developers but then when we lift up the the citizen developers that can build dashboards and know how to interact with their data and they know their business domain we're paying it forward to that next group of folks and, and they say the same thing about us. Hey, developers are amazing. So, 2018, okay. In uh, San Jose. Okay, I think I remember. Yeah, yeah. Already saving the cash to go to TwitchCon. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a we're gonna have an amazing time with the Live Coders team there. Um, and you wanted me to put on a, a Phillies hat. I will wear a brighter hat next time. I'm sorry. I wasn't able to get to that today. Because because of our guest and having to run here, um, so that Madrinas fuel cup uh, giveaway is still out there. Real easy to register, and folks that do use the Fritz code, you're going to see the alert pop up here on stream for the next few minutes or so while we're wrapping up. Uh, thanks to whoever he was talking about. Yeah, right. Democratizing like Squarespace, democratizing coding. Like how Squarespace did for web dev or YouTube did to publishing. Yes! Right? YouTube gives, and uh, Twitch, right? Gives everybody the ability to have their own television channel. You wouldn't tune in to, to watch somebody write write code live on, on K 
cable TV? They're not going to put that on ESPN. Well, ESPN, they might. They do some weird things. Maybe ESPN 8, The Ocho, right? Is it, they, they could do that over there, right? Well, do your best. All right, I'll try and get on ESPN. Um, so there's definitely options, right? Different ways that we can we can interact and make folks visible, right? When I think about PBS in this country, public broadcasting stations, right? And and um, Bob Ross, so influential to so many of us when it came to painting and the arts. And now he's live 24 hours here on Twitch. But PBS in the, in the States has been losing funding. So those high quality programs that many of us learned from, like Sesame Street, uh, aren't available there. And they're pushed over to HBO where they can afford that. And HBO is is big bucks so the chances of somebody doing something on public broadcasting to do educational content is much more accessible here on twitch or youtube so hugo points out and and he makes a very good point here people watch qvc um so Little known fact, QVC is actually like 10 miles down the road from me. The 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 studios, the whole shoot and match, the whole nine yards, it's Westchester, Pennsylvania, where QVC is based out of. It's just, it's a quick 20 minute drive away. You can get to the QVC studios from me. So folks like Joan Rivers, when, when she was with us, would fly into Philadelphia and drive down to QVC and that's where she would broadcast from. All kinds of folks have been down to those studios. .NET Kyle says they could put hackathons on ESPN. You'd watch that. But I don't think you'd want to watch all 48 hours of a hackathon. All right? There's a point there that eh, you might want to watch an hour summary of what happened. But where's the excitement of, of looking over somebody's shoulder and going, oh, my gosh, Robert Tables is writing an error handler. Look at that error handler. Oh, my gosh. He's, a, he's handled that error amazingly. Oh, he's reaching for the coffee now. Is it? What's it? Oh, my gosh. It is black coffee. Leaving the cream and sugar behind. We're not going to get into that today. Oh, my goodness. No, see, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see that. The advert channel, go figure. Yeah, right? <laughs> it is the advertising channel now. It is. Um, oh, they need to split the coverage with gaming tournaments. Twitch DEFCON Live. So hacking into, with it, like the hacking... Tournaments at DEF CON. Oh, they're going to break into this system. Let's see if they can get past the FBI now. And broadcast that live. <laughs> uh, that could that could be totally crazy. Jeff Widmer asks, How do I get the live with the red dot on Twitter? Is that manual or Streamlabs or something else? This is a good question. This is a question that, that um, I get a bit. So I have, if you look at Twitter right now, my profile name actually has... A red dot next to it that says live on Twitter. Um, let me see if I can pop that open real quick. There it is. Right? So if you go over to my Twitter right now, it's got this big red dot and says live. So here's the thing. I don't know who that squirrel is. There is no squirrel. Um, I was dressed as a squirrel, all right? So what I have here, inside my OBS settings, when I click start stream for OBS. It actually runs nine different actions, including announce that the stream is starting, change my name, change OBS so that it goes to my start uh, my start stream scene. Um, actually start the stream itself, right? Like bro start broadcasting and put into Twitch chat a message. Now when I change my name, I just set it to there it is. So it has that red dot live. And that red dot Windows dot and it'll I didn't get Karnak appearing. Karnak, where are you? Right. Um uh, Oh, that was the wrong button. I hit the wrong thing. Oh crumbs. Everything went away. My bad. My bad. Woo! <laughs> uh there it is. Back on the stream deck. So, right, when I click on change name here, right, if you hit Windows key dot, it's not going to show me that. All right. It's in here. It's one of these shapes that you can choose. 
is just that red dot. So you just choose the red dot. Where was it? There's a stop sign, right? And it's just an emote that you put on, on the thing. There it is. So you can make it whatever dot you'd like or square or whatever. It's just an emote. And it, it works on everybody's on everybody's screen at that point. So um, it's it's kind of like cheating, kind of, I don't know. I think it works fun. So yeah, Windows key dot will open that up for you. Um, so let me see, I'm trying, I'm still trying to kill just a little bit more time. Please tell me you're starting, otherwise um, I'm not going to be able to raid you here, friend. She's not starting. She's not starting. We need our other commands that turn it off when I stop streaming. Not screaming, streaming. Uh, um, yeah, so when I, I have a stop streaming button as well. And when I click, hello. I've crashed the stream deck. So I, I have another button here for stop streaming. When I click into that, it has three actions. Um, and it says stop stream for OBS. And then it changes my name and it puts it back to just Jeff Ritz. It's just a, an action that it comes with the stream deck that changes your name. So real easy to identify and use. Um, and uh, happy to show that off. And, and show just how easy it is to make this happen. So, today you learned, uh, yeah. And there's pizza, you can throw pizza as well. That's a thing. The stream deck does change your life. Just make sure that you be careful, it doesn't change your life too much because I've got four stream decks in front of me. Um, I've literally got 30, 62, 68. I have more stream deck keys than I do have keyboard keys. That's totally a thing. There we go. She started her stream. Let me get you set up. I want to make sure. Let me do the raid now. Here comes the raid call. Let me head over. This is kind of important to me. This is somebody who's who's an inspiration to me, who's helped give me ideas, help help guide me, provide great feedback, help counsel me. Please, if you're if you want to follow along with us, here's copy the top line if you're a subscriber, copy the second line, get ready. We are going to raid. It's her last day streaming during the day because she's going back back to work and she's going to be changing her streaming schedule. The first time in four years changing her schedule. Let's start her off right. She's going to be having a celebration day to, today. This is Imperial. We're going to go see our friend Misty. Um, I'm very happy to be able to call her a friend. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. We're going to head over. Let's be loud. Let's be proud. Let's let's shake her. Let her know that we are so happy to see her. I will be back on Sunday morning, my regular time, 10 a.m. And you'll find us uh, you'll find us writing some code together on Sunday. We're gonna go back into our Blazor code. We're gonna write some some cool stuff, and hopefully get some more controls shipped here. Remember to hydrate and caffeinate. Absolutely, Hugo. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I really appreciate you joining us. Big thanks to Alex and Shlomo for joining us today. And get ready to go say hello to our friend Imperial. All right? This video, like all my other videos, will be over on YouTube probably a little sooner than later for our Madrinas friends. I hope you have a very good weekend. Say hello to my friend Imperial for us. Take care.